gentlemen. Uh, we will start this uh, webinar today and welcome to uh, today's webinar on trends and issues in vocational education and training. And uh, it's a pleasure for us today. Uh, we already have uh, the director of State Polytechnic of Malang, uh, Bapak Supriyarna Disuwiknyo, who is going to uh, give his remark, opening remark and also open this webinar for today. So before we uh, start the sessions, I would like to invite uh, our director, uh, Bapak Supriyatna uh, Adisweknyo, to officially open this uh, webinar. Uh, please welcome uh, the director, Bapak Supriyatna. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, Dr. Vicky Kopet, and also Bapak Dr. Senal Arif. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my sincere gratitude uh, and welcome all participants to today's webinar on trend and issues in vocational higher uh, education. As we are aware, the world is shifting and the industry is changing especially uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Vocational higher education and training is therefore facing many challenges. One of the challenges is to adapt to the change in order to produce relevant graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, we organize uh, this webinar to address the trend and issues in vocational higher education. To provide a space for us to discuss uh, what we need to consider in vocational higher education and training. This webinar is organized by Polytechnic Negeri Malang, State Polytechnic of Malang, but uh, we also invite other organization and their members. We are honored that today we have uh, notable guest speakers. First, Dr. Vicky Ropet from IFETA, International Vocational Education and Training Association. Thank you. And also, Bapak Dr. Senal Arif from Indonesian Nuclear Technology Polytechnic, also from Print. Terima kasih, Pak Senal. We believe the two speakers with their extensive experience will provide insight into, into important issues and trend in vocational education and training. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my hope that this webinar can run successfully bringing together researchers and practitioners to share and discuss theoretical and practical knowledge in vocational education. Last but not least, my deepest gratitude goes to the organizing committee. And of course, the case speakers for their willingness to share their insight. I wish I wish you a very productive webinar with exciting and encouraging discussion and exchange of knowledge. May God bless us all with good health to make this even a successful and enjoyable one. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Thank you, uh, Baba Supriyatna, for uh, okay. delivering the opening remark and also opening this webinar for today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the first sessions, I would like to greet somebody from Ghana, Dr. Fiki and also Zainal. So we've got some participants here from other countries too. So Dr. we've got Dr. Patrick, and he's just uh, wrote something on the chat that he's now online from Ghana. 
And also some participants from Bangladesh and also from India, I think, will attend this uh, webinar for today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start the first session with uh, Dr. Fiki Roberts. But before that, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Fiki Roberts. Uh, well, uh, for over 25 years, Dr. Fiki Roberts has provided technical assistance and support in programs focusing on education, human resources, uh, and change management. Uh, graduating from the University of uh, Southern Queensland, Australia, uh, Dr. Fiki holds a PhD in education as well as Master in Education, Online Learning, and Bachelor in Teaching. Um, other Australian qualifications uh, completed by Fiki that have assisted and facilitated her expert advice include uh, an advanced diploma in business and accounting, diploma in human resource management, diploma in leadership and management, and lead auditor in ISO quality management systems. Uh, Fiki has provided uh, human resource capacity development and training programs for public and private organizations, undergoing policy and institutional change for more than two decades. So since um, 1990, Fiki has been developing technical vocational training, uh, accredited and non-accredited curricula, as well as providing teacher training, TVET quality system, and establishing uh, PPP agreements and industry education cooperation programs. So, um, uh, as an HR and TVET expert, Fiki has worked in Afghanistan, Australia, Canada, China, Egypt, uh, Kuwait, America, Pakistan, PNG, Timor Leste, and the United States. And maybe next time Indonesia, Fiki. So your next destination is uh, maybe a Polynema <laughs> instead Polytechnic of Malang, Indonesia. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Dr. Fiki Roberts from IVETA. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, the welcome. Um, thank you very much for organizing this, and I hope everybody enjoys the webinar. Um, the, the guest speakers, I'm sure, will excite and um, inspire you to consider more aspects of vocational education. Okay, so now I'm going to try and share screens, except my host has disabled this, so I need to um, ask if you can um, enable me to share screens, please. Oh, yeah, sorry. Let me set you to a co-host now. Yep, and also Dr. Yep. Okay. Right. You should be able to do that now. Okay. Okay, so let me see if I can get this working right. Yes, <laughs> that's okay, it. Okay, now, um, now, okay. Do, 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 do. Now, can you see one one slide or two slides? I uh, see. Um, well, I, it's just the um, not the uh, display functions of the uh, the screen. Fiki, do you want you me can... to help you with the slide? Oh, uh, it says I'm sharing screens, but I'm wondering if you you can see one slide or two slides. Uh, just the first, just the first uh, screen. The first, the first yeah. slide. Yeah. Oh, good. It's, it's oh, good. So that means it's working. It's yeah, but but not the uh, what is it? Not the display, the full size slide. Oh, it's not full size. Yeah. Maybe you oh. need to close that first and then you can open that one once again. Oh, stop sharing and start again? Yeah, stop sharing and yeah. Well, technological problems, <laughs> internet connection problem. <laughs> Let's see. No, that's the wrong one again. Oh, wait a minute. Already. I know what I've got to do. I know what I've got to do. There we go. How's that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, my discussion today is about um, post-COVID TVET. And there's a number of issues that have arisen um, due to COVID and how we're trying to manage um, TVET um, in a, um, a demand situation. But what we've found is that some students are left behind and they're just not coping. So I'm going to talk about that. 
So the workshop agenda that I have today is the effects on COVID on education, um, TVET training that happened during COVID, um, and how research has helped us to find a way to support students. Um, then developing a framework to assist these stressed students and supporting TVET students to be successful and the skilled people that we need. And um, finally, how we can improve quality outcomes through this strategy. Now, is everybody seeing the screen okay? Yeah? Yes, yes. Oh, good. Okay. So um, the effects on the education sector from COVID have been greatly researched. Now, I don't know whether you can see this or not. Um, yeah, that might be better. Um, and it created the largest disruption um, in education history and affected 1.6 billion learners in 190 countries. But the crisis also stimulated some interesting innovations in the education sector. Now, research um, through the British Council was presented at a glowing global conference in June of 2021. And they um, interviewed and researched 15 TVET institutes um, in their um, Improving Work Opportunities program. And they interviewed TVET practitioners and leaders from five countries, Ghana, India, Malaysia, South Africa, and the UK. The findings were from the British Council research that um, although the national policy content may be different in each country, innovation was a dominant driving theme for all the institutions. They had to find ways to survive. Um, the move to digital learning and teaching brought benefits, opportunities and, chall and challenges, um, which was something new to many institutes. And uh, TVET institutions showed resilience, creativity and entrepreneurship. But um, the new assessments, the quality assurance and the teaching methods that were developed required staff and students to be upskilled on digital tools and force them to become more independent learners. There were psychological effects due to COVID as we're all aware. Now in that study, there was also a British university study in 2020 on 233 students that found the negative impacts of COVID and the isolation affected behaviours, lifestyle and their mental health. In Australia in 2021, a teacher reported that so many students at her school had behaviour or psychological problems that they needed to hire a, psycholog a psychologist to assist the students. Now, John Haiti from the University of Melbourne also did some research, and he said that the biggest travesty of COVID is if we learn nothing, because it was such a remarkable influence on the education sector. Now, institutes invested in blended learning during the COVID in order to survive. Uh, many students complained they were not prepared to be self-directed learners and they missed the campus experience. However, institutes and teachers adopted a constructivist approach to learning and tried to encourage students to discover and construct knowledge for themselves via the online blended learning format. Post-COVID, there's still many institutes that are converting into a blended learning option because it was found to be cost-effective and they could reach a lot more students that way. 
I myself in 2021 spent the whole of that year um, on a Pakistan project uh, that was a blended learning project, teacher training project. The aim was upskilling the teacher trainers in um, not only institute trade skills, but also their andro andragogy skills. Um, now, during that time, there was a number of issues that arose. Um, I supervised 12 in international technical experts who developed um, different programs from dressmaking to hairdressing to uh, solar to welding to all sorts of um, different practical industry skills. And we also uh, needed to hire nine Pakistani nationals to conduct the hands-on practical training. And that, what's, that is what became of the blended learning program. So we conducted um, the online program, which mainly covered the theoretical components especially for the, the, the technical areas, uh, the, the, the technical subjects. But um, the problem was that we found that the students were, even though they were supposed to be highly skilled with IT, they still had a number of problems. There was 255 students that completed the training throughout Pakistan. Um, but I'll talk about the problems in a minute. Um, there, there were a lot of common problems that happened in Pakistan on that project that have appeared around the world due to the forced blended learning in order for us to be able to continue with TVET training. So these online challenges that we faced, there was access to IT resources was an issue because of the internet breakdowns, because of um, um, computer technology breakdowns. Um, not every learner had access to a stable environment. Um, there was a, a lack of contact for question and answers, immediate contact. Um, they were able to send messages um, via the web portal and we responded promptly, but they still didn't feel um, satisfied um, because not all learners are self-directed or can cope with being self-directed. So many learners struggled with the online material. There was a creation of new ex expectations. Um, the feeling of isolation affected their learning, their cognitive, emotional, and social wellness. There was a, a lack of digital literacy. They were able to create documents. They were able to answer emails, but to function around the screens and move following online directions um, confused a few people. There was a lack of student motivation because of the problems that they were facing. It reduced their, their, um, their motivation. There was, uh, of course, the, the problem with plagiarism in one issue I was um, identified that one student had her daughter completing the online component because um, she was ill and she didn't know how to use um, the, the IT platform. So there was a number of challenges and these challenges appear to still exist with um, online programs. But past research has shown the way on how we can support these learners. Um, for 20 to 30 years, 
they've researched substantial bodies of evidence at um, assisting learning. The teaching and learning methods, rather than being used by tradition or opinion or fast fad, like blended learning is becoming a fast, uh, the latest fad, um, we need to look backwards at what has worked in the past. And one um, educator in the US has said that people want something that works. They aren't just doing business as usual. So TVET teachers are seeking evidence-based strategies. Um, I don't think it's just TVET teachers. I think it's school teachers as well and university teachers. They want something that has um, a, a foundation, a strong foundation. So some of the countries around the world are drawing on their COVID responses and have started focusing on tutoring and other programs um, to assist students and support them to be effective learners. Tutoring is revealed as an evidence-based evidence effective strategy, and it's also very cost-effective to help students when they're lost and not coping. Now, tutoring for TVET students has a number of options the one-to-one -one or small groups, online or in person. They can be delivered, um, tutoring can be delivered by um, people or can be an online program that is focused on a particular concept or a particular um, difficult uh, assessment. Um, but we've got to look at the people that we hire to be tutors. Um, we don't want to just put people in a room, call them a tutor and say, um, go forth and, and um, assist the students. That would waste a lot of money. So there are some cautions to this. There are no guarantees that a particular program is effective or will be successful in a particular institute or for a certain student style of learning. Um, Extra student tutoring cannot by itself address all the learning issues and full institute support is necessary if a um, student learning assistance program is implemented. So institutes may consider a tutoring framework and in doing that, um, they need to take an active role in connecting students with the tutors. Um, we don't want inequalities to be perceived from one student group to another student group. Institutes need to commit time and resources when implementing a, a tutoring framework. And a key element of successful tutoring is a rigorous and caring culture. The culture of the Institute is very important. So the tutoring frameworks need to be developed by the teachers and the tutors co-jointly and then supported and promoted by the Institutes. So let's have a look at the factors that affect a tutoring framework. Um, Research has found that there are a number of design principles that need to be considered. Um, frequency, the um, number of periods or sessions per week need to be at least three or more. Group size needs to be small groups. The smaller the group, the better. Um, one, on tutor, one on one tutoring is the most effective, but it is also the most costly. Personnel, um, the skills of the tutors uh, need to be um, effective, but also they can be volunteers or they can be peer tutors or they can be college students, um, past or present that can assist other students. The focus of the tutoring, 
needs to be effective at all education levels. So it needs to needs to make sure that it's across the board, not just for the beginners or not just for the end people that are trying to achieve their final exams. Then the measurement of the, the tutoring programs, how good is it doing? Um, how effective is the um, instruction for the individual students? There are other important areas to also consider in the tutoring framework. The relationships are very important. The tutor to student relationship builds a strong understanding of the needs and those can be explained to parents, um, to teachers. Um, the curriculum needs to be aligned with the classroom content so that tutors can reinforce and support classroom teachers. Scheduling. Tutoring um, needs to be during the institute day. Results from research have found that after hours tutoring is um, not as effective. Um, they need to see it as part of their schedule day. Delivery is um, also being researched and focused on in-person tutoring, but tutoring can also be delivered online as long as it is quality and it is um, aimed at the, the right level. And student prioritization, again, we don't need to make it appear as tutoring is some sort of punishment, that it is um, for those who are below the grade level, um, we need to ensure that it is across the board so that if it's um, for a particular grade, um, they can have expanded or reduced sessions. Now, the role of TVET tutors, very important. Um, tutors are knowledgeable, experienced and very effective communicators. They have the knowledge and the teaching skills. They help students to do the best they can, and they use different strategies than a classroom teacher or an online teacher would provide. Um, tutors support teachers by providing students different ways of looking at the content and using different strategies and techniques towards gaining some sort of learning and towards uh, retaining that learning and being able to use those skills. But tutoring can also involve regular formal meetings and check-ins. These are sometimes important, not just for the tutor and for the teacher, but as also for the student to feel as if they, they are supported. There can be observations and debriefs um, during or after a, a club or a class or a lab discussion. And then can be other informal discussions and activities. TVET tutors need to be trained. It is important that these tutors are not just teachers and they're not um, peers that have um, been highly graded in their, their subject areas. They need to be trained in communication. Um, they need to be trained in different learning styles and um, learning abilities so that um, the untrained tutor doesn't destroy any learning um, in a student. Um, by merging tutorials and enrichment activities, you can have more successful outcomes when it's mixed with the course curriculum. Effective tutors focus on equipping students to better understand their learning style, their learning process, how they engage with the, um, the content and with the skills that they need to learn and how they can prepare for the next stage, whether it is the next subject or whether it is the next year level. 
So this is a diagram on the roles of a tutor. Um, tutors need to be involved in the basic skills of students. Um, they are important in helping students practice and build skills. And it is also important that um, tutors are involved in how they demonstrate and apply and a practice in their different skills. Tutoring um, towards success has um, necessary for many TVET students in order to be successful. Interaction is so important. Um, tutoring needs to become more common in institutes due to the decrease, the increase rather, in uh, TVET courses being converted. There's more and more programs being converted to blended learning. Um, it's, it's reaching the masses and there is um, a cost effectiveness, a return on investment, but um, we are losing a few students because they're just not able to be self-directed learners. Um, tutors and institutes, if they're not the same person, then it's important that they share and align their training outcomes and tutorial goals so that the students, the teachers and the tutors are working together to achieve success. Communication between the, the tutor and the teacher needs to be regular with reviews and updated reports to ensure that the students gain increased strength um, and are aware of their weaknesses and can work on those areas. Students need to be inducted into their tutoring. Um, it's important that students are aware of what course they're in and what's expected of them. So tutors need to go through the and ensure that the students are in the right course for them. I mean, it could be that the, the student is tackling something that they really don't have a great deal of interest in. And so that creates a whole lot of other problems, learning problems. Um, they need to be introduced to the ways of working with the institute or college and the systems within the institute. They need to have an idea of um, their learning program and how they're going to go through the tutoring to achieve. They need to be aware of their responsibilities and commitments for the tutoring and what they've agreed to, um, to achieve for their course and what they've agreed to, to abide to the institute and college rules. They need to raise the awareness of opportunities available to them. Um, tutors need to identify alternatives for students if they are really not doing well and are not in the right place. Tutors need to develop a learning plan to help these students. Without a plan, um, the students cannot identify how well they're doing. The, the teachers cannot see um, how much they're achieving. Tutors are generally in the best position to know the key skills and what levels are the most appropriate for each student. And they need to be able to develop a piece of work for assessment that they are happy with and comfortable with. Tutors are the best ones to identify when they're ready for assessment. Um, information from an initial or diagnostic assessment helps the tutor to identify the requirements of the student's learning plan. And learning plans need to be recorded so that the outcomes can be maintained and appropriately updated. 
tutors assist learners develop independence, which is part of self-directed learning. Independence and self-directed learning go hand in hand. Tutors take a part in the process. They support students to plan their work and set targets. They provide them with the first steps to improve their learning and their performance. The problem is that often students don't realize that they need to plan their learning and they just dive in. So it is necessary for the tutor to help them develop a plan, how they're going to achieve, what they're going to achieve and when they're going to get there. That way students can know what, what they've achieved and when they will be able to be assessed. So at the end of the day, TVET institutes need to look at their outcomes and the quality of their outcomes. They need to consider tutoring as part of their support mechanism so that students can achieve goals and they can get a taste of lifelong learning. Often students have difficulty um, just going from one piece of learning to another without understanding that this is part of the growth process and part of the process for their future career, career is this concept of lifelong learning. They need to continue, continue learning throughout their life and throughout their career. So with a institute plan or an institute framework um, on tutoring of students to support them through their learning, this will assist institutes, reduce dropouts and improve the quality of training outcomes and the number of graduates. That was a very quick presentation and everybody was very silent. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah. I think, yeah, everybody is uh, paying attention to the uh, presentations like Dr. Vicky, Vicky that is a very interesting uh, presentation, especially um, because the issue is, is, is uh, very relevant to what is happening around the world. Yeah, so we are facing what, um, what post-COVID um, pandemic and I guess, well, what happened in my class uh, more or less reflect what you have presented and and let, let's invite um, some comments and also questions from the audience then. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with us, uh, uh, we should create uh, some uh, participants from, from other countries, uh, Dr. Vicky. So today we have um, Dr. Patrick Swainsif uh, from Ghana in Africa, and also uh, Dr. Francis, uh, uh, who uh, was uh, well previously studying at Latrobe University in Melbourne, uh, but now uh, is based in uh, Cape Coast in Ghana, University of Cape Coast in Ghana, and also Dr. Luciana from uh, Kwame Numra University of Science and Technology in Ghana, and of course uh, we also have Dr. Kailani from Kalimantan, Indonesia, and uh, let's invite uh, questions and uh, comments from the participants. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open, we are now open, uh, open the um, question and answer sessions and you can also give comments on uh, the matter or the sessions with Dr. Fika Roberts. Anyone, please, uh, you can use uh, the chat feature or you can also open the microphone and uh, uh, directly ask your questions to Dr. Fika Roberts. Let's invite Dr. Patrick here. Dr. Patrick, you're still here? <laughs> you're still with us? Or maybe, yeah, I think it's still here. Or maybe, yeah, we have uh, Kartika, maybe it's open microphone. Do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd like to ask some question because okay. I work in some polytechnic in mm. economics. Okay, and, Kartika, yeah. Mm. And uh, maybe you have, uh, what is it, insight, what will be the trend for economic especially finance 
trend in polytechnic. Okay, that so... is my question. Thank you, Mr. Adian and uh, Ma'am Vicky Roberts. All right, thank you so much, uh, Katika. And the question is, uh, especially for um, economy, so economics uh, for education, focusing on economics. What is what is it like? Uh, the trend in the future, uh, Dr. Vicky, uh, maybe post pandemic. Uh, maybe you can relate this to uh, to touring uh, or the, the uh, focus that you have presented. Today. Okay. Um... The economics of um, TVET itself or the economics of um, development of, of uh, TVET in countries? I think uh, in relation to <laughs> TVET, I think, in teaching. Yeah. TVET in teaching? Yeah. Okay, the economics. Um, economics is, is, a, is a big umbrella. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think it appears that um, at the moment, because of the um, the reduced money flow in the mm. economies around the world, there's not a lot of resourcing for teachers happening. It seems to be at... Um, a normal pace rather than an accelerated pace. Mm. Um, budgets are still very tight and people are applying for budgets for their faculty areas. Um, but um, there's some leniency for online learning that is already, already in existence. Mm. There is um, some indications that is um, budgets will allow it in the future, but um, it, it appears that the the finance worldwide uh, um, they're still talking about recessions, and they're still talking about um, world economic crisis. So I think people who are in charge of budgets, uh, ministries and departments of education are very cautious at the moment um, in, in um, releasing too much money um, without a, a strong foundation of, as to why they, those funds or how they can get a return on, on the investment of those funds. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons, um, that I talked about the, the tutoring, because a lot of times, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of times the tutoring is volunteer. Mm. So there's no budget involved. Mm. Okay. So that is interesting because, um, I think in the context of Indonesia, um, like in Bukartika, it's a lecture, right? Bukartika, so it's um, they, they, they get they get paid for uh, teaching, uh, Vicky. So yeah, yeah. But in, you in, can in also um, have volunteers. It depends on your budget. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can um, cajole people. Um, locally or, or cajole students um, with the idea that it gives them extra experience, especially ones who want to become teachers. Vicky, mm -hmm. uh, have, you, have you previously handled like um, um, student exchange, I mean like online student exchange where you can, where you, where you teach online through Zoom or um, any all of 2021. Oh, full. So, so during, <laughs> during 2021? Uh, all of 2021 oh, okay. in the Pakistan. And yes, that okay. was every day I was on the computer teaching okay. uh, every day. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, Ibu Kartika, maybe you can also propose and invite Dr. Fiki to teach <laughs> in the campus. That would be lovely. I mean, uh, invite uh, Dr. Fiki to. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. currently I'm I'm teaching in uh, Nepal too, in oh, Kathmandu Nepal. University. Kathmandu. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, okay, that will be very interesting. Just uh, I, I I think Dr. Fiki will be very happy to to help you with the this stuff thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ibu Kartika. Now I see. Uh, How to sustain our TVET education yeah, for um, the predicted world economies down? Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I I think that is. Um, I think we've got to look at it from a different perspective rather from an education perspective. I think we've got to look at it from a, a labor market perspective because TVET supports the labor market by providing skilled labor. That's the whole role of TVET is to provide skilled labor. Um, and, and so I think rather than looking at the education budget, I think we need to look at the um, the labor budget, um, the the labor economy, um, and consider if TVET didn't perform as well, um, how would that reduce it? And and I I think the um, the factor of the labor market um, ministries are putting pressure on education ministries because mm. they need TVET to, to function and function. Somebody's got their hand up. Who's got their yeah, hand up? It's uh, Lily. So we need to invite, uh, I don't know, Lily. Is, is, is Lily from Indonesia or? Yes, no, Lily? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is, is Lily Western Yakum. Okay, so and you are from? Yes, from Ghana. Oh, from Ghana, okay. Yes, and... Uh, Dr. Swansea is my lecturer. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, I, I want to find out, uh, looking at the slides, uh, we all know that uh, Tibet uh, students, teachers, we all know that Tibet is very good and it can support a country. Uh, but if you look at the Tibet system, uh, the chunk of resources are pushed to the other side instead of the Tibet. Uh, courses. So I wanted to find out if uh, the developed countries, uh, is there any assistance that the development countries can support the underdeveloped countries when it comes mm. to Tibet uh, education? Mm. I am from Ghana and I, I, I love Tibet so much. So I want Tibet to grow in my country. That's why I'm finding out if uh, the developed countries can assist the underdeveloped countries when it comes to Tibet uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thanks, thanks, Lily. Um, there, there's a number of projects that are supported, TVET projects that are supported by um, all the funding bodies that I'm aware of. Um, I That's the work I do around the world is uh, work in the TVET sector. Um, and I've worked with World Bank and they focus a lot. Um, I've worked with ADB, Asian Development Bank, USAID, um, Australia Aid and um, EU, um, Africa Aid. They, they all do as much as they can um, in the TVET sector, but it seems to have flavours. These, these funding bodies seem to have um, flavours of, of sometimes it's the education and then all of a sudden it's health and then, then it's, it can be infrastructure with roads and, and um, wastewater and things. And, and um, so it, it seems to go in cycles. So, um, Lily, don't despair. There will be funding coming your way someday, somehow. Mm. Thank you very yeah. much. And um, can I share something from my side, uh, Vicky? So uh, our Polytechnic, State Polytechnic of Malang also provides scholarship for international students. Really. So if you are interested in studying in Indonesia, you can also apply 
uh, get uh, international scholarship from our campus. That would be lovely. Okay. So yeah, you, you can yeah, visit. There, uh, there are there yeah. are a number of international scholarships available. Scholarship, yeah, yeah. Um, the um, the UK system or the Europe system, what is it? The Arethmus. Um, they have a lot of scholarships that you can apply for online. Um, most countries um, in the US, in Australia, um, a lot of them have scholarships at university level. Um, there are, I know Australia has programs at the vocational education level, at the, the TVET level. So there, there are a number, it just requires a little bit of research and investigation mm -hmm. online and you'd be surprised how many um, agencies and how many colleges are offering scholarships. Thank you very much. I'll share information and scholarship. All right, so um, any any more questions from the participants? I think this is very interesting. So, so uh, Dr. Fiki, during 2021, you support mm -hmm. you supported um, institutions from other countries and in, in no, no, no. Oh. I, I spent the whole year in Pakistan. Oh, Pakistan. Um, okay. I actually spent um, two and a half years in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I had another pro Pakistan project before that one in yeah. 2019, um, mm -hmm. but I've worked with TVET in Egypt and did some quality um, work with the institutions and training the um, quality managers of institutes ah, okay. yeah. in Egypt. That was an eight month project. Um, okay. And then um, where else? Uh, I've set systems up in the South Pacific. I've um, developed TVET. Oh, I've trained teachers in the university in oh, PNG yeah. to develop um, competency-based training. They, they'd never seen competency-based training. They were just used to the, the academic university um, mm -hmm. form of training. And I trained trained them and, and we developed a diploma for the um, uh, Department of Education in PNG to train all of their midline managers. Oh, do, so, do um, like, mm. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Do they have like, uh, you know, in Australia, you have Australian, uh, Australian qualification framework, right? So in Indonesia, we also Correct. have uh, Indonesian qualification framework. Yeah. Uh, uh, do uh, Pakistan, does they... Uh, do they have uh, Pakistan uh, qualification framework? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. To, to be honest, most of the frameworks around the world, yeah. I mean, Egypt has a framework, um, mm -hmm. South Pacific has a framework, um, Mauritius has a framework. All of the frameworks are very, very similar mm -hmm. um, in, in reality. Um, the, the qualifications are marginally uh, different at the certificate level. Ah. But once you get up to the diploma, advanced diploma and degree level, they're, they're all much the same. Mm. Okay. So we've got uh, one hand yeah. raised here. Akusa. From Akusa. Hey, Akusa. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Akusia. I'm um, also a student of Dr. Swansea, mm. and I also administrate um, a creative university in, in Accra, Ghana. I, I want to ask, um, I think one of our main major problems here is um, people being able to understand that TVET is not for quote and unquote um, unintelligent people. Oh. You have um, teachers and administrators and even schools uh, placing um, TVET under sci uh, uh, beneath science, yeah. technology, mm -hmm. and others. So, yeah. uh, how do we? What are some of the things and ways that you you've seen others do to assist them or to support them 
um, kind of negate this impression so that TVET mm. is seen as a boost to the economy instead of um, mm, those who mm, are mm. not good or not smart are the ones that are pushed into such industries. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's it's a cultural thing, to be honest. Um, I've um, discovered that, it, I, I'll go back, um, it's becoming better. More and more people are recognising that the labour force is is based on TV. Um, the idea that um, TVET is a second class citizen is is reducing around the world. Um, but the problem is that the the cultural shift hasn't occurred with the upper upper layer. So you still have grandparents and parents who think that their their children need to go to university in order to be successful. Um, where in actual fact, um, many of them are quite happy um, not to go to university, but to become a trades person or to have um, a bit of a, a, a road towards university where they go through the, the diploma level first and get a taste of, do I want this career path? rather than go for the university first. So it's it's really a cultural shift, but the shift is happening. And it's, it's happening not rapidly, but it is very, very happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the, the generations um, have changed their, their concept, but the, the older generations, um, who unfortunately are the, the the mothers and the grandmothers and things like that, they, they still retain that idea. And, and they're going to be difficult to, to change. But um, the force is there. Hmm. So um, we have uh, one uh, respond here, one comment from uh, Joko, uh, Vicky. Uh, what, what solutions or what goals of TFET educations during the re recovery period after being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So yeah, what, what are goals of TFET educations? What are the directions of TFET educations? What solutions are the main goals mm. of TVET education? I think the, the, um, the solutions are still being formed. We're still getting over um, the pandemic. Um, we're still trying to find our feet. We're still investigating um, what do we need to do now that we know that we can have online learning and it can be effective. Um, sure, a couple of people are having difficulties, but the masses seem to be able to cope, and especially with the younger generation. But not all the younger generation are coping with online learning because it's, it's, it's a definitely a learning style in itself. It's, it's really like a new learning style. Um, so the, um, the main goals of, of TVET are just to really investigate um, what other avenues do we have? I mean, we're in, we've got different learning styles emerging mm. due to um, this, yeah. this broadness of online learning. Um, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I'm, I'm a product of, of distance learning. I must, I, you know, I, mm. I'm, I'm very proud to be a product. I, I did my degree, my master's and my PhD while I traveled and worked. Um, I didn't go to a lecture. Um, I must admit, when I did with my PhD, I found um, the collegial um, aspect was definitely missing from my PhD. But with my degree and my master's, I had no problem at all. Mm. Um, so, you know, we've got this emerging new style of learning. Of, of being a, a self-directed learner, which is, is something that we've always recognized, 
but it's never been forced upon us. Now it is forced upon us because, you know, it's really the majority of um, of learning happening at the moment. People want to have the um, the ability to choose when they learn, the ability to have access to learning and, and online learning and distance learning, because I've done it by paper based and I've post and I've done online learning and I've done all of the, the methods. Um, that has provided a whole new mindset and a whole new way of learning. So um, we're still discovering things. So it's, you know, the, the old pre COVID is is traditional and mm. and now we've we've gone through the COVID for two years and now we've come out of that and we're still discovering what else is there you know how else can we form things um it's it's not a matter of what's working and what's not working more than than you know what works for some doesn't work for others so what can we do with the others so it's it's a piecemeal thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if if we can express that, if we can use one word to capture the main point that Dr. Fiki has uh, delivered, that would be uh, self-directed learning. Yeah, self-learning. So it's just <laughs> independent learning. So yeah, you know, independent learning and self-directed learning. But that does not suit everyone. I mean, I was mm -hmm. fine doing it because I'm a very directed person. Yes. But um, I have family members who cannot. They, they just, they, they quit courses because they just cannot cope with self-directed mm -hmm. learning. Even though they had one, you know, one week um, tutorials and things like that. Uh, I didn't even have tutorials. I, I just yes. did it completely by mm -hmm. myself. Um, but not everybody can do that. And, and we've got to make allowances for differences in learning, the same as we've always done. There's differences in learning styles. Oh, okay. So, so anyway, uh, Fiki, what, what is it like in Australia, I mean, in, in uh, students, in terms of uh, their degree of uh, independence in learning? Do, do they have the ability to perform self-learning and autonomous learning? That's an individual person, mm. personality trait, really. It, it, that's, that's what it's becoming. It's becoming an individual personality trait. You're, you're a self-directed person um, in your work or you're not a self-directed person. You need to be given instructions, more step-by-step -step instructions. Mm. Um, more, some people are more used to analysing a situation and finding a resolution other people get surrounded by the situation and get confused and um, can't fight and they give up. It, it, it really is, is a person, personal trait that's, that's developing, mm. a, a, a new trait. Mm, okay. Um, oh, we have uh, one hand raised here from, I think it's Dr. Patrick, so I see from Ghana. Dr. Patrick, is still there? Hello. I'm um, so there, Adrian, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I have a question, and my question is that uh, uh, in Ghana, uh, TVET has been rebranded, and the government has invested in the sector now, and it's making it very, very attractive. But uh, one challenge I still see is that when it comes to the general courses like mathematics, uh, English, and uh, science, the content of the, the of the curriculum is like the the grammar school, you no. Know? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to know if traditional uh, that yeah, like the traditional school. So I want to know whether that is the experience in uh, Indonesia and Australia is different. Okay, um, I don't know about Indonesia, but in Australia we have um, courses that uh, th th these are for the introductory courses. Um, and they're basically, um, now let me think of the wording. Um, it's, it's English for 
the the trade like it could be english used in in um carpentry or english used in um electronics maths used in carpentry maths used in electronics mm. so it's related to whatever the focus is for their overall achievement if they want it's like a, a pre-apprentice course type of thing that's what we have in australia but i don't know what indonesia has well indonesia uh, i think it's quite similar dr fiki so we also have english for specific purposes like english for tourism yeah. it's for business yeah. applications yeah it's it's more focused on specific uh field yeah, okay. yeah. Meeting exactly the, none of the industry yeah I think uh, we, we also adopt the, uh, well, more or less, it's quite similar to the uh, Australian qualifications framework. So we also uh, adopt some part of, of, of that uh, framework. We're known so, for, for our, our strong TVET sector. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we still have a very nice and uh, interesting discussion with Dr. Fiki Roberts, but unfortunately, because of the time, uh, time limitations, we have to then uh, enter the second session for today. So before that, uh, we would like to say thank you so much for Dr. Fiki Roberts for, um, for attending this webinar as a key speaker and for sharing a very interesting insight into uh, key issues in uh, vocational education and training today. And uh, again, Dr. Fiki is from uh, IVETA, the International Vocation, uh, Vocational Education and Training Associations. And uh, we are happy that today, uh, Dr. Fiki, uh, this uh, webinar is well attended by uh, participants, not only from Indonesia, but also from Ghana and also from other countries. I see some familiar names here, uh, also from, from uh, uh, I think, Bangladesh uh, uh, attending this uh, session today. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was the first session for today's workshop. Uh, Thank, uh, sorry, for today's webinar, <laughs> not workshop. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fiki, for attending this as a key speaker and also for sharing the uh, very uh, in insightful information about the trends in um, uh, vocational education training. My pleasure. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are now entering the second session and we would like to invite uh, Dr. Zainal. Uh, is Dr. Zainal here today? Let me, okay. All right, so yeah, Pai Zeno is already yeah. here. Uh, Martian. All right, thank you so much uh, Pai Zeno for coming today. <clears throat> we are going to start the second sessions with Dr. Zeno Arif. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce uh, Dr. Zeno Arif first. Uh, Dr. Zainal Arif got his degree in Bachelor and Masters of Engineering in Electrical Engineering from Institute uh, Technology School November in Surabaya, Indonesia in 1993 and uh, in 2005. In 2011, uh, Dr. Zainal Arif uh, obtained his Doctor of Engineering degree from uh, Graduate School of Information Science, Nara Institute of Science and Technology, Japan. So it's far away from, uh, from Japan. Uh, I always want to visit Japan, uh, Pak Zainal. So. <laughs> and uh, Pak Zainal is the former director of the first ranked polytechnic in Malaysia, uh, Polytechnic Electronica Negeri Surabaya. He started to serve as the director of PENS from 2013 to 2017 for the first period and continued to the second period from 2017 to 2021. From 2020 to uh, 2021, he was also elected as the chairman of the director forum of the Indonesian State Polytechnics uh, and inaugurated on March 2022. He is now officially assigned as the director of Polytechnic uh, Technology Nuclear Indonesia, and that's the uh, Indonesian uh, Nuclear Technology Polytechnic, very interesting uh, polytechnic, um, under the National Research and Innovation Agency uh, of Indonesia until the next four years here, yeah. So currently he's also uh, carrying out many academic activities under the uh, Directorate General of Higher Education and the Directorate General of Vocational Education of the Ministry of uh, Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Indonesia, such as the Steering Board of Indonesian Society of Applied Science, expert team of uh, Beban Kinerja Dozen. Uh, I think this is the, uh, the Indonesian lecture uh, performance indicator, something like that. So, and staff of the Development of Indonesian International Student Mobility Award uh, for uh, vocational students 
And he is also a registered in social activities such as already members, radio activities members and other social organizations. So I think ladies and gentlemen, especially uh, participants from Ghana and also uh, 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 members of international vocational education and training uh, associations from other countries like from uh, Pakistan and also Bangladesh. If you are interested in nuclear technology, <laughs> so Zainal, uh, Mr. Zainal, Dr. Zainal is the right person. Uh, so uh, and also uh, Dr. Patrick, uh, I, I know that you are interested in this uh, field. So I, this is would be this would be a nice place for you to meet uh, Dr. Zainal and also perhaps build uh, networking with him and and you may ask uh, questions later on after this session. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start the first se uh, the, the second session for today's webinar with uh, Dr. Zainal uh, Arif. So Dr. Zainal Arif, uh, the, uh, the, this Zoom room is yours now. Okay, uh, thank you, Pak Arjian. Uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, Pa, it's very okay. clear. Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for my opportunity uh, to deliver uh, some information about uh, the current trends of uh, vocational education, especially in uh, vocational higher education. Yeah. Uh, because as uh, mentioned by Pa Artian, that I, uh, I'm uh, basically I'm a lecturer and then uh, with uh, additional uh, responsibility as a director of Polytechnic since 2016. And now uh, I've been assigned uh, to uh, govern uh, the let me, uh, Indonesian uh, Polytechnic Institute of uh, Nuclear Technology under uh, National Research uh, and Innovation Agency, or we can say uh, PRINT. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not talking about uh, nuclear technology right now, by Ardian and ladies and gentlemen, but uh, more in the the issues of uh, vocational uh, higher education. But of course, if uh, I think on the next uh, uh, next opportunity, we can keep in touch, uh, uh, talking about uh, nuclear technology uh, and also uh, possible uh, collaborations. So uh, let me share my presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Is it on the screen, uh, my uh, slide now? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. So what I'm going to say uh, this afternoon is about the link and match program because uh, link and match program here uh, can uh, strengthen uh, the innovations and also uh, the career path. Um, in terms of our graduates uh, can find uh, their job after the, directly after they got uh, their uh, certificate. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, what I'm going to talk uh, this afternoon is about the vocational uh, higher education uh, developments. Uh, consists of role uh, and expectations. And then I will uh, uh, highlight about the polytechnic and also industry corporations. But uh, it's not uh, only polytechnics, limited to only uh, polytechnic, but also a vocational school, a vocational faculty, or a vocational program under university or under the institutes. And then, uh, uh, more explanation in innovations and uh, also some issues uh, and challenges of uh, vocational higher education uh, nowadays. Okay, but uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, refer to law and uh, regulation framework uh, for vocational higher education because it was mentioned uh, it's mentioned in the law and the regulation framework that uh, what a uh, vocational higher education must do or what the target of uh, vocational higher education. So uh, we have a law of uh, higher education number 12, uh, 2012. It's about uh, higher education. And then we also have a national standard 
of uh, higher education from Ministry of uh, Education and Culture Regulations. And of course, about the quality assurance, uh, there is a quality assurance system uh, for higher education regulations. These regulations uh, under the Ministry of Research, Technology, and uh, Higher Education uh, from uh, number 62, 2016. So as a institution of a vocational higher education must fulfill the law and uh, regulations uh, in order uh, can run uh, three pillars uh, well. The three pillars here mean uh, education and then the research and also uh, society service, or we can uh, say three dharma perkurati in Bahasa. Okay. Uh, about the law of higher education, uh, in the first of all, there is a function and objective of uh, higher education over there. So this is the main law and regulation frame of uh, higher education. And then uh, number two is about the standard of uh, national education standard and also uh, national research standard and uh, national community uh, service standard. It's about national standard of higher education. And continued with the quality assurance system, as I mentioned before, it uh, consists of uh, internal quality assurance system and followed by uh, external uh, quality uh, assurance systems. So that's uh, the main law and regulations. Okay, now we uh, a bit uh, detail in law of higher education, uh, number 12, 2012. It's about uh, three functions of uh, higher education, yeah, as well as vocational higher education. In the chapter four, the first one is to develop uh, the capacity and uh, also build the character and civilizations of uh, dignified nations in developing the uh, intellectual life of the nation through establishing uh, the higher education system. And then uh, the second is to uh, develop uh, innovative and also responsive, creative uh, skills, uh, competitive by implementing these uh, three pillars of uh, higher education, which are the education or learning systems, and then uh, continued with uh, uh, research and then uh, uh, society service. And number three is to develop science and technology by uh, taking into account and applying uh, the value of uh, the humanities. So uh, we have to develop the science and technology in order uh, for uh, to how to say, uh, for the humanities. Yeah. And it can be implemented to the society, can be implemented to the industry yeah, or in our uh, innovation products. So it's, uh, I'm not going to uh, detail, give a detailed explanations in the chapter five of the law uh, number 12, but uh, just highlight uh, the main point, the first one is we have to develop the potential of uh, our students, uh, of our uh, to be uh, morality good and also healthy and ed well educated and qualified. And of course, uh, after they graduate from uh, our university, from our vocational higher education, they have to be uh, competent. Uh, in, in their uh, in their major, and then the second, uh, we have to uh, produce the graduates uh, with a high uh, competitiveness. Yeah? So, if our graduates have a high competitiveness, and of course it can improve the competitiveness of uh, the nations. The third one is we have to. Taking, taking into account about uh, our research, our innovation product that uh, could be uh, implemented, uh, could be is, uh, applicable for the uh, society, for the uh, industry, 
and also for the nations. And the number four is also to provide the, of course, the public uh, dedication. Is this is more in a society service of the vocational higher education or the higher education to the society. And now we we'll, and now we move to the the national standard of uh, higher education about uh, the minimum standard that uh, set out by our government that must be fulfilled by all uh, higher education, including uh, vocational uh, higher education. There are three standards, consists of uh, education standards and uh, the research standards and also uh, society uh, service standards. Each standard uh, consists of uh, eight, uh, eight points. Uh, eight points. Uh, firstly, the competence of our graduates, and then the substance, uh, um, the substance of the material of the subject of uh, each study programs, and then the the process, and uh, the fourth number four is the evaluations. Number five is uh, human resources. Number six uh, about the infrastructures, and the. Seven is about the governance and uh, finally the financial. So the eight point here must uh, fulfill the minimum standard that uh, have been uh, set out by uh, the government. And uh, the certainly about the quality assurance systems. So the vocational higher education must uh, fulfill uh, the quality uh, Assurance uh, systems uh, in their institutions. The first one is about the internal uh, quality assurance systems by vocational higher education uh, institution. They have to uh, periodically uh, audit uh, their governance by themselves, and after that, they have to use that uh, the result to evaluate and then find the solution of the. Uh, problem, uh, the problem that uh, that found in in the auditing process, and then the second is about the uh, external quality assurance system by the board of uh, national or uh, private accreditations, and right now we have a, a lembaga akreditasi mandiri. Uh, how to say in English, Pak Ardian? Uh, private, uh, accreditation accreditation board. Board. Yeah, private accreditation board, yes. And then uh, for, uh, the, the point is, uh, the important one is for the accreditation, the output of uh, international quality assurance implementations and it will be used as indicator uh, for institutional accreditation by uh, accreditation uh, boards. And we, uh, when implementing this quality assurance system, we have to iterate these uh, five points, which are planning and implementing, evaluating, uh, controlling, and uh, then uh, developing. So it must be uh, uh, taken into account uh, by each of vocational higher education uh, institutions. Okay, now, yeah, we move up to. The mandatory uh, program, uh, the mandatory responsible that must be uh, implemented by vocational higher education, which is uh, the collaborations with uh, industry. So between vocational school, vocational faculty, or uh, vocational program, and also polytechnic must have uh, collaborations with uh, industry for uh, value uh, added products. In this uh, graph, we can, uh, of course, uh, each uh, institution, uh, for example, each polytechnic or each industry, of course, they have their own product uh, to uh, provide to, uh, to society. For example, polytechnic uh, can uh, provide their research publication or their innovation product, as well as their uh, graduates uh, to the uh, societies. As well as industry, they also have their own product services uh, that uh, 
can be uh, provided uh, to the uh, society. But if between uh, polytechnic and industry can work together, it must be the new uh, opportunities and it will be the new uh, innovations in terms of uh, maybe the product or maybe the services that can be provided uh, to the society. So, uh, and now we are uh, going a bit detail in this uh, new opportunities here, what kind of activity and then uh, what uh, an output that can uh, we obtain from these uh, activities, collaboration activities between polytechnic and industry. Okay, now, so the strengthening industrial networking is uh, the important factor uh, for the vocational uh, education here. Okay, uh, namely, this is uh, like a link and uh, match uh, program between uh, educational institutions and also between the industry. So we can run and we can establish, uh, for example, the recruitment program. So the polytechnic or vocational institution can invite uh, the industry to, uh, uh, say, to proceed their recruitment program in, uh, in the campus. So in that way, our graduate don't have to go uh, anywhere to find uh, the job after the uh, graduate. This is uh, one of the facilities that must be uh, provided yeah? uh, uh, for vocational higher education. And then, of course, uh, this is uh, yeah mandatory uh, program also for a vocational higher education, which is uh, internship uh, program. So we send our students to the industry, uh, to the uh, technopreneur, to the working world, in order to give uh, our students more uh, experience. And we also can uh, run joint research programs uh, together between polytechnics and also between uh, industry. As well as uh, in teaching factory, there are some uh, industry uh, can uh, support the teaching factory uh, built in the uh, polytechnic, in the uh, vocational uh, higher education. Uh, the meaning of this teaching factory or the function of this uh, teaching factory the students uh, can also can uh, uh, study uh, can learn about the maybe for example manufacturing process uh, for example about the industrial process of course in the in the small world uh, in the small scale i mean but uh, uh, at least they already uh, have like a few yeah, about what they will face in the uh, industrial work after the graduates. And then uh, the important also is about the tracer study. Uh, we, we always uh, need uh, the information. We always need uh, the feedback uh, from industry for our evaluations, including the curriculum, including the uh, technology uh, development, including the, uh, the competence uh, needed, so etc. Yeah. So this is a uh, very uh, valuable information that uh, we need. And of course, uh, we have a lecture case. So we invite uh, the expert from industry to give a lectures to uh, our students. This programs also uh, uh, how to say run by Ministry of uh, Education, Culture, Research, and uh, Technology, uh, named. Uh, practice mengajar, uh, practice mengajar. So the, we invite uh, the expert from uh, industry to give a lecture to uh, our uh, students. And then of course, uh, the curriculum uh, collaborations. Hopefully from uh, these uh, activities, we can get uh, an output uh, about innovative product from joint research and also from uh, the, the tracer study from the teaching factory, it can be uh, produced as an innovative product. And that product is not only, uh, not only how to say, just the new product that no, no one uh, needed, but uh, it will be implemented a uh, research uh, product because it's already uh, collaborations between uh, polytechnic and between uh, industry. And uh, we also can, uh, 
meet the supply uh, and demand uh, alignment, uh, and then uh, link and match program, and of course, uh, the career path uh, programs. Through these uh, activities, it also can uh, shorten the waiting period after the student graduates uh, to get uh, their, uh, their job. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to mention about the uh, innovations. Indonesian ranks right now uh, from the Global Innovation Index is uh, in the rank of 75th. 75th. But uh, it's better than the 2020, 2021, and 2022. So, uh, and the uh, rank nine in the among the lower middle income group, <clears throat> and also uh, the rank thirteen in Indonesian rank among the seventeen uh, economies in Southeast uh, Asia. Why uh, why I put this uh, innovation index because the vocational higher education, as I mentioned in my slide before, is uh, become. Uh, how to say, uh, unggulan, apa, produk unggulan ya, yeah. uh, the center, uh, how to say Pak Adrian, produk unggulannya Poltek dia, ya, the vocational higher education must, must provide the innovation uh, product because it's applied, uh, applied education, yeah. uh, you know that the difference between vocational higher education and academic uh, education is in vocational higher education, more uh, applied, yeah. In terms, of, uh, they have to do some uh, experience and some experiment, yeah. And also, they have to go to the uh, industry for example in one semester, and also two semesters to work in the industry. So that's what I mean. It's a uh, more uh, applied, yeah. So that's why uh, we can say that uh, vocational higher education must. Uh, must give more uh, innovations uh, product to the uh, society. Okay. So let me proceed to the next uh, slide. And to stimulate uh, this innovation product, the industrial uh, and also vocational education uh, collaborations is not uh, limited in one, uh, one majors. Uh, possible can be implemented in engineering and can be implemented in uh, agriculture, in art and uh, tourism hospitality, in marine and fishery, and also in uh, commerce. So through this uh, collaborations and also uh, give some uh, digital literacy, as uh, Dr. Fiki mentioned uh, in, his, in her presentation, we have a big data, we have a smart system, we have a, like a cyber physical system, we have a artificial intelligence and uh, also an IoT. Hopefully uh, with this uh, uh, digital uh, assist, it can be, uh, it can stimulate uh, uh, more innovation product from uh, vocational higher education through the collaborative research, uh, and also can strengthen this uh, collaborative research and also improve the implemented product or innovations. And then, of course, it will strengthen the competence of our lecturers and as well as uh, our students. And then, uh, of course, about the uh, our teaching factory, it will be uh, improved. Okay, this is uh, the best practice of uh, implementations. And of course, we have to uh, meet the minimum requirement and also the quality assurance about the facility and infrastructures and also uh, our lecturers, our technicians, and uh, our students and uh, supported programs in our industrial and vocational education collaboration schemes in many areas with uh, digital literacy embedded in this uh, collaboration. So it may become the center of excellence. The vocational higher education 
uh, may become the center of uh, excellence. And from this uh, center of excellence can be uh, produced, uh, uh, for example, the business incubators, and then also the teaching factory, and also uh, certification center. So we have uh, like the center of uh, technology. <clears throat> And then, of course, it will it will support uh, the research centers in our institutions, and then uh, as well as well as uh, support our uh, student uh, community. Okay, now this is about the uh, issues and uh, also challenges uh, of uh, our vocational higher education about frictional uh, unemployment. Frictional unemployment. The frictional unemployment means, uh, as you can see in the center center graph here, uh, some of uh, our graduates uh, uh, cannot be uh, entering the labor market due to the the shift of job vacancy. So uh, our uh, our role, the vocational higher education role, is to align this uh, frictional, yeah, in order to all of our graduate can uh, can fill this uh, labor market and can, can fill the uh, job uh, vacancy. So the solution is we have to uh, synchronize, we have to align uh, between vocational higher education and also uh, with the industrial with industrial field uh, and the work field. And by implementing a uh, link and match uh, program. Okay, so uh, now we are talking about the uh, supply and uh, demand information. Yeah. The supply side, it means uh, our vocational uh, higher education. This is from the, ministry, the coordinating ministry, the data from coordinating ministry for human development and culture about national strategy for vocational education and training. We have 341 polytechnics and also 700, uh, five academy, 68 community college, 94 institute, and also uh, 563 tertiary school, yeah, with a vocational school or vocational faculty or vocational uh, program. And the demand side, is about the uh, labor market. So we need the information about uh, this labor market. And now uh, I just I just uh, proceed about the information about the labor market here. Uh, it's provided by Kemnaker, the Ministry of uh, Labor Market. Uh, the, so the, the graduate also can find uh the job vacant in 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 this uh, website as well as in the uh in the uh local government the local governments also have this kind of information about the uh, job vacancy but the, the 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 interesting one is uh, when i when when i try to uh, find some uh, job vacancy as I uh, write here, it's for diplomacy. There are some uh, some job vacancy, and if I put uh, the uh, how to say the job vacancy for the bachelor of applied science, there are no <laughs> there are no vacancy there. But uh, if I put uh, in the filter the graduate from the academic education. There are still uh, there are still uh, job vacancy there, but okay. Now maybe this is interesting, interesting, yeah, interesting problem here yeah, that uh, we have to <laughs> to find find more why there are no uh, vacancy for the bachelor of uh, applied science. Okay, this information from uh, from uh, Surabaya City at uh, dot Surabaya dot go dot id. Okay, this is also one one of uh, the problem, one issue. So now about the demand and uh, supply side. Yeah. So from to uh, to synchronize uh, to align between uh, demand side and the uh, supply side, we have to 
we have to have the alignment uh, indicator but this alignment indicators must uh, uh, must support uh, by of course uh, the ministries uh, and also the professional and uh, associations by the labor organizations by the accreditation boards and also by uh, uh, certification uh, agency this alignment dimension is uh, including the quality or the competency and then the quantity and also the location uh, and time so in more detail in this in this slide from the demand side uh, there might, uh, it has uh, it have uh, some information about forecasting need about uh, uh, the employment or the business and opportunities so there are some information about the employment needed and the business needed and also opportunities for uh, for job vacancy and that information is consists of the quality or the competency needed and then how how many uh, how many uh, employees uh, needed in quantity and then where it needed in location and when so this is i think this is the important information yeah it consists of uh, many in many areas about uh, the goods and also about the services so through this information it must be uh, deployed by a vocational higher education uh, institutions in order to match uh, what uh, should be given in education process uh, it will match uh, with the what uh, the industrial need of course it's uh, we have to deploy uh, based on the quality and then the quantity the location and of course uh, time but uh, to fulfill uh, this uh, this information or this what is it uh, to fulfill this uh, quality to fulfill this quantity location and time we have to uh, at least the minimum requirement and quality assurance about the facility and infrastructure and also our lecture and staff and uh, learning system uh, education process this is i think this is the big a big uh, homework for vocational higher education but uh, but at least uh, there are some uh, quick wins yeah, some quick wins to uh, uh, face these uh, problems okay uh, this is uh, one uh, one alternative or maybe we can say one uh, quick wins here yeah. If we have uh, this facility, uh, lecture and also learning systems, and then uh, embed in that systems about the digital literacy in industrial 4.0, about the big data and the smart system, uh, also the artificial intelligence in our uh, curriculums. So uh, hopefully can can produce uh, our graduate, our job seekers, but uh, it's competitive and also uh, uh, the vocational higher education can uh, produce the competitive uh, technopreneur that ready uh, to enter the labor market. So uh, finally, uh, by implementing this uh, the synergy between vocational education and industry, uh, hopefully we can uh, have the competitiveness uh, resources yeah. and the impact of course uh, we can uh, contribute to the national socioeconomic uh, development and the outcome uh, we will have a good and potential networking of course and then in our in the, our education system it will be uh, integrated yeah, because it's already matched with uh, what industrial needs so we have this uh, supply and uh, demand uh, synchronization and the output is, uh, yeah, of course, we have an uh, innovative product that can be uh, provided to the society. And also, we have a short waiting period uh, to get the job for our graduate. But uh, there are still the challenge. Yeah? Uh, we have to get this uh, integrated information system of the labor market. As in my uh, slide before, there are some information, but uh, they, they are work 
work by by themselves yeah there are no no integration of uh, the systems and then of course uh, sustainable human resource uh, development yeah so i think this uh, my uh, presentation uh, thank you back to pa Ardian. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zainal. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was the second session of this webinar. Uh, Dr. Zainal has presented and provided insights into the uh, Indonesian's vocational education and uh, training, uh, um, um, the, the bigger picture of the Indonesian uh, vocational education training, TVET, Indonesian TVET, especially the Indonesian polytechnics. And more specifically, and then I think this is more important, uh, Dr. Zainal has also provided insight into the collaborations between the uh, Indonesian polytechnics and the industry. And this is very interesting. And, and I think this is very relevant to, to many contexts, many countries, and, uh, and also uh, relate to the participants, home countries, uh, participants who are attending this webinar today. So ladies and gentlemen, we are now uh, opening the, uh, questions and answer session uh, we would like to invite you to drop questions if you want to ask questions you can write on the chat feature of this uh, zoom sessions or you can also open your microphone turn on your microphone and ask questions that was very interesting uh, dr zainal uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, bringing this to the table of discussion today by zainal and yeah ladies and gentlemen do you have any questions for uh, dr zainal especially about uh, the collaborations between uh, the industry and uh, polytechnics. How far is the uh, gap, the gap between um, the industry and the, uh, our education, especially education education, uh, Dr. Zainal? Is it very far? And uh, I think, I think we, we, we have, uh, uh, we already have collaborations, right? But yeah. how far is, uh, you know, uh, based on your experience, how far is the, the gap between the industry and the uh, vocational education, especially higher education? Yeah, thank you, Pa Adrian. <clears throat> I think I believe that all uh, vocational higher education already uh, have a collaborations uh, with uh, the industry. But the question is, yeah, how far, how deep the collaboration is? So uh, I think that collaboration should. Uh, get uh, taking into account into uh, entering the curriculum itself, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and after the curriculum, so it means uh, the technology development needed in industries already give uh, in education uh, system in vocational higher education. That's uh, the first one, and of course, uh, if possible, the industry also uh, support yeah in terms of. Uh, maybe material process, also the learning process, for example, they are willingly uh, to send their experts to our vocational higher education, as well as maybe some material needed uh, for the learning process, they will uh, provide it uh, to the uh, vocational higher education. If that can happen, so mm -hmm. I think it's, it has a, a big uh, benefit it's useful for uh, the vocational uh, higher education, especially for uh, our students. Mm, so the the uh, collaborations must touch the curriculum applied in higher education, Dr. Zainal. So, yes. uh, yep. Yeah. So I have uh, you. Know, we have one questions here from uh, Bumila, Bumila from Polinema. Um, um, Dr. Zainal, what is your opinion regarding the role of uh, the role of internal quality assurance in polytechnics to reduce or close the gap uh, between uh, polytechnics, the education in polytechnics and the industry. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. thank you, uh, Mila. The internal quality assurance here means that we already uh, evaluate our governance mm -hmm. in uh, our institutions in many terms, in academic terms, and then in the supporting systems, for example, in administrations in the uh, our financial in our bureaucracy in our uh, uh, cooperation program so if if we periodically evaluate if we periodically uh, do some uh, if, if we say uh, audit internal and then we evaluate together and then 
uh, find uh, some uh, solutions uh, for the problem uh, found. So I think we already run iterated, uh, iterated, how to say, uh, iterated improvements in our mm -hmm. uh, vocational higher education system. So through that way, if we want to collaborate with the industry, so I think it can be uh, run uh, smoothly because internally we already do some uh, sustainable improvement. So I think it's important if we want to uh, uh, work together, if we want to make some collaborations with uh, our uh, stakeholder, with industry or with uh, other uh, institutions. And, uh, and also this internal uh, quality assurance, uh, it will be us when we are uh, going through the uh, external uh, assurance, which is the uh, accreditations, uh, whether it's uh, study program accreditations and as well as the uh, institutions uh, accreditations. I think that's uh, the answer for Bu Mila. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zainal. Well, this is my personal questions, uh, Zainal. I'm always curious about um, uh, how the Poly Indonesian Polytechnics uh, use uh, ISO, <laughs> International Standard uh, ISO. Uh, is that, uh, in, in your view, is that part of our uh, effort to to ensure or to convince the industry that we can we can keep up or we can we can raise the bar and achieve uh, the industry standard of the industry yes but Arjan, i think the iso is also one um, added value yeah uh, one added value uh, for ourselves for our institutions that uh, it gives the our stakeholders more uh, uh, more belief yeah or more belief in us because through the iso is kind of a, a competence yeah, the competence uh, for us for doing the learning process to uh, our uh, students here. Yeah. But uh, of course, uh, not uh, in Indonesia, not many, uh, not all polytechnic, not all vocational higher education uh, use this uh, ISO here. Yeah. yeah, and can afford that because that's quite expensive. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of I think also <laughs> have a relation with the budget of yeah. All right. so uh Dr. Zaino, uh we we still have uh one questions for from uh Ibu Dini. I guess Ibu Dini is from uh, Polytechnic Negeri Padang. Uh does uh, VAT curriculum in Indonesia uh, deal with or concern about students' employability skills? Yeah. Very interesting. This one. Does VAT curriculum uh deal with or concern about students' employability skills? Okay, does that curriculum in Indonesia concern about the students' employability skills? I think, yeah, what uh, I mentioned before that uh, in industrial collaboration, one of the scheme is curriculum uh, collaboration. So that means that the competence needed in the industries already give in the curriculum in the semester of uh, our students. For example, in, in my institution here, in the uh, Polytechnic Nuclear, we give like uh, the training and uh, certification program for our uh, students about the radiographic uh, protections and also about the uh, ultrasonic uh, ultrasonic testing uh, certification. Mm -hmm. So through these uh, certifications, they have like uh, uh, more more value when they are. Uh, entering the uh, labor market because many of uh, industry need this kind of uh, certifications. So I think it is very important if we can mm -hmm. embed yeah, the competence needed in industry to uh, our uh, curriculums. Mm, okay. Um, we have uh, one comment from Dr. Fiki Roberts here, by Zainal. Um, she wrote that in Australia, it is necessary to provide evidence of industry involvement before changes in competency standards and wait, changes in competency standards and qualifications are accepted by government. Oh, okay. So before changes in curriculum and standards, we need to, they need to provide evidence. Um, does that happen too in Indonesia? I mean, to uh, yeah. Uh, some of some of happen, yeah. <laughs> some of mm -hmm. happen means yeah, that we have to involve uh, the industry before mm -hmm. we change our curriculum. Uh, 
we we periodically uh, five years evaluate our uh, curriculum and when we evaluate we need the data we need the information from industry about the uh, competence needed the technology development and then uh, discuss together to embed uh, in our curriculum but uh, for the uh, but uh, for to implement this curriculum we don't have to uh, inform the government yeah we have like uh, the mm -hmm. senate the academic senate in our institutions and so we have to report to our senate and then if the senate agree to implement that curriculum so we start to uh, implement that uh, uh, curriculum that's uh, what uh, the answer of the question from Dr. Okay. Paul, Dr. Vicky, yeah. yeah yeah so it's actually a bit different from australian yeah. uh, case yeah. oh we have one hand raised i guess this is from dr patrick from ghana dr patrick yes uh, hello idn uh, i would like to thank uh, prof thank you for your presentation uh, i would like to find out uh, in indonesia do you have special quality assurance framework for hmm. vocational and technical education or okay. the quality assurance framework is also for the traditional universities Okay, so uh, uh, quality assurance uh, frameworks uh, specific for uh, vocational education. Yeah. Okay. Do we have that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, for especially uh, for vocational education, we have no specific uh, accreditation uh, standard. Mm -hmm. We have uh, no qualification uh, quality assurance standard. But uh, we are now in process to promote. Uh, the Sydney Accord, yeah, from uh, uh, from EIP, yeah, to be used for this uh, quality assurance for vocational higher education. But uh, in the meantime, we are using uh, the accreditation uh, standard from the private uh, accreditation uh, agency, yeah. But before that, there are the we have a national. Uh, accreditation board, yeah, uh, from the government. But now, the government gives the responsible uh, to accredit the study program to the uh, private uh, agency. So uh, now we use that uh, the standard from uh, this uh, private agency. But of for a specific vocational higher education, we have we have no uh, no that kind of uh, system yet. We are still working on that. Mm, hopefully, uh, yesterday we had a webinar on that uh, issue uh, by yeah. Zain. So, uh, and uh, Professor Muhammad Ramli mentioned Muhammad that Ramli. Now, yes. of Polytechnics now working on uh, developing uh, and uh, asking for yeah, the Sydney Accord, right? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Hopefully, we can we can get that sooner. So we, we need that standard and also accreditations. Now uh, there is a one response from Michael and uh, uh, and he wrote, uh, please, Dr. Zainal, most polytechnic institutions more po uh, are into uh, theoretical learning other than practical learning. All right. <laughs> so I guess this also happens in Indonesia where uh, sometimes we you know uh, tend to uh, focus on theoretical learning instead of uh, practical. How can uh, how can their curriculum be tune into the real mandate of practical activities oh interesting <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah some polytechnics are focusing on theoretical learning uh dr zainal yeah uh in average in average the uh, compositions between theory theoretical and practical is uh in uh, 60 to 40 sometimes 65 to uh 45 yeah uh, but uh some polytechnics also 60 65 uh, theory and then 45 uh, sorry 35 uh, practical so it's depend on their uh, uh, the, their majors yeah because it's also have a connections with the industry for example we have like a, the social uh, social uh, social scheme and then we have uh, engineering scheme and we have you many uh, humanity scheme yeah so i think they have uh, the different portions but uh, uh, most of uh, the polytechnic most of vocational uh, higher education have a uh, more portions more uh, more allocation uh, credit for the experiment for the ex for the experiment uh, comparing with the uh, theoretical
but in average about uh, 60 to uh, 40, 60 for uh, experiment and uh, 40 in uh, theoretical. Mm. That's including is including uh, the internship programs, yeah, including wow. uh, they are uh, working in in uh, in other uh, institution or other industry outside the institution. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zainal. We only have two minutes left, but I guess this is the last questions for today <laughs> for this webinar, and it's from Fatih. Uh, Dr. Zainal, what is the role of TFET in human resource development in an industry? Ooh, interesting. This is a very broad question, but I think it will be this will wrap up everything in this webinar. <laughs> Dr. Zainal, <laughs> what is the role of uh, this uh, of the uh, human resource? Uh, oh, sorry, of the role of TFET in human resource development? Yeah. Uh... As this vocational higher education is uh, expected to produce uh, the graduate, yeah, expected to produce the graduate with uh, 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 skillful, yeah, well educated. Yeah. So I think uh, the role is how can we, uh, how can we educate uh, our students yeah, with 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 uh, a good skill, yeah. Oh, for them to enter the uh, labor market. So through this, uh, like collaborations with industry and such, uh, we put some competence needed in industry to our curriculums, and we uh, send our students to go for internship for one semester or two semesters in industry. I think this uh, our our effort, yeah, uh, our effort uh, to uh, develop. Uh, the uh, human resources, but not limited to the students. We but uh, we also send our uh, lecturers yeah, to the industry. This is uh, this is what what we do yeah uh, to uh, to develop our uh, human resources for uh, industrial concern. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zainal. And I guess that uh, answer also wraps up uh, the session for this webinar, the second session of this webinar. Um, Right, so yeah, from Dr. Patrick, oh, Q, uh, yeah, Q, QA and TFET is key to excellent outcomes, yes. Oh, and also from Budini, thank you, Dr. Zainal, very insightful presentation and sharing. And Dr. Zainal, I have uh, received some uh, messages asking for your emails. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I will, I will uh, write my email. In okay, so yeah. So, so yeah, uh, it would be nice if, uh, you can write your email because uh, some participants asked me about for your email so that maybe they, they want to contact you for for a collaboration yes, my pleasure so while uh, dr zainal is writing oh okay this is the email uh, of uh, dr zainal arif from the indonesian polytechnic of uh, nuclear technology uh, so that also uh, marks the end of this uh, second uh, sessions of this webinar and also the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pa Zainal, uh, Dr. Zainal Arif, for attending this webinar as a key speaker. It was very insightful presentations and also uh, I think very useful not only for uh, Indonesian participants but also for uh, participants from other countries and this webinar today has been attended by participants uh, from Indonesia and also from uh, Ghana and also from Bangladesh and Pakistan and especially for, uh, for from um, Aveta members and uh, I see various uh, uh, many participants from various countries uh, attending this webinar today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please give applause to Dr. Zainal Arif and uh, also um, as this is the end oh goodbye uh, Fiki and thank you so much uh, again uh, as uh, Max of the end of this uh, webinar thank you so much for uh, the first uh, speakers of this today's webinar Dr. Fiki Roberts um, thank you thank you so much you're still here <laughs> you're still with us thank you so much Dr. Ricky and so you're you're still listening to Dr. Uh, Zainal's uh, presentations thank you so much for yeah, thank you so much for the sessions, Dr. Fiki, and also, oh, Pastor Briana is just here. Director, Pastor Briana, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to join here. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Bapak Director, uh, Pak Supriyatna Disweknyo, and also uh, Pak Zeno Arif, and also all participants of uh, today's webinar, and it's been very successful, and thank you so much for 
all participants from other countries, uh, from Ghana, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, and all members of IVETA. Thank you so much, and all uh, participants from uh, uh, Polytechnic Negeri Padang and also Polytechnic Negeri Medan, and, and many participants all over Indonesia. So that was uh, that marks the end of this webinar. I close this webinar. Thank you so much for attending this uh, today's webinar. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Terima kasih, Pak Direktur, Pak Zainal. Direktur, mohon pamit. Terima kasih. Sehat selalu. Sehat-sehat, Bapak-Ibu semuanya. Sehat selalu, Bapak-Ibu semuanya. Amin, amin. Bapak Ibu, uh, if you want to get certificate, kalau ingin mendapatkan sertifikat for this webinar, mohon dikirim, eh, mohon diisi uh, form yang tadi ya, form untuk attendance. Nanti kami akan mengirimkan uh, uh, certificate and also link for uh, recorded uh, sessions for today. Kami akan mengirimkan uh, rekaman dari uh, video hari ini, recorded videos for today. Thank you so much uh, and see you in the next webinar. So I close this. Uh, goodbye.